quarter joint. And so the protocol to me is a smoke screen that belies the real issues here that need fixed. And that means it's not like the health service is being closed down, this is just bigger structural decisions can't be made. Are there areas that you know of that are calling out for decisions that simply can't be taken as a result of the lack of an executive? You're right, you know, there, there is still money in the system, but the problem is it does require a bigger alternative uh, to what we have. So I believe in the past 20 years there's been seven reviews of healthcare in Northern Ireland. And Peaceful and democratic fashion. And if I could respectfully say, we look across the water and we see the mess that Brexit was and is, the lack of clear planning, conversation and engagement and what that resulted in. And let me tell you, we will not repeat that fiasco on the island of Ireland. What is more important to Sinn Féin in Northern Ireland? Is it keeping the Northern Ireland protocol or is it getting the Northern Ireland government, the executive, up and running? Because they seem at the moment to be mutually exclusive. Well, they're not. <coughs> The, the they also the unit, aren't they? And they have well, to play. Well, that's it. Well, that's this, no, that's this different assertion. The, the imperative is to get government up and running. <laughs> what we call the trouble. Um, has the culture changed? Is there a different culture, whose trouble culture evolved from that time, from that generation? I have two daughters who are teenagers, and, <clears throat> and I think it's because that they are more open to the whole wide world through social media. They almost contextualize our problems, and of course the constitutional question still haunts this place. But my daughters have a fundamentally different experience of this place than I have, fundamentally different. Who grew up in Northern Ireland, it was kind of a goldfish bowl and an echo chamber of hearing the same stories and the same opinions over and over again. And this generation that are about to have much more access to what's going on culturally across the world. So they are interested in you know the same issues that young people are addressed in across the world: the environment, a gender, a class. I Joe and Brian, who both found that the money won't stretch, the elastic of the welfare state has pinned. Joe is 47 and lives in St. Hostel in Cornwall. He's married with three children. He's a full-time dad. He has Asperger's. His elder son is autistic and Joe volunteers for a social housing group. It just upsets me to hear it all the time everywhere. Everybody is having to use up their savings. I went down the road of credit card debt, passed in, and with my mental health, they kept giving me more credit cards. I kept spending more money because I couldn't see a way out. A bit like yourself, um, using up all your savings. Well, I had no savings. So I have a family, I have an autistic child that doesn't understand that you need to switch lights off. I got to a point where I've now had to enter what's known as a, a debt relief order, which is a horrible thing to do, but I just couldn't see another way. And now with the cost of living crisis, I can just see it getting worse. It just makes me sad to see it. I don't know. Have you had the same feelings, like, with everything that's going on? When, you know, you get a multi-multi-millionaire, Richie Sunak is telling you we're giving you 200 pounds, but you're going to have to give him a bike. He's never had his own goods. They're taking us for fools. It's very annoying.